Your regular programming on North Star Radio will now be suspended, so you may listen to Mark Mercer's Loving, Caring, and Sharing. In a world gone mad, this is Loving, Caring, Sharing. Mm-hmm. That's right, it's Friday night, and that means one thing, and that means one thing only. It is Mark Mercer's Loving, Caring, Sharing. Welcome, everybody, to the show. And, then, man, we've got a show tonight that has been coming, well, it's been in the works for about 45 years. That's right, 45 years it's taken to get to this point. And, uh, boy, I am excited. i got to tell you, uh, I'm really jazzed. But before uh, before we get to our special guest, uh, we we'll take a minute here and uh, introduce the crew. We've got our regulars here tonight. Of course, my uh, producer, Daniel Davison. Daniel, say hi. Hi, Daniel. Hey, that's very good. Yeah, that was clever. I never heard anybody do that before. Okay, and of course, i got my MOA. That's the Master of Arms, and that's Steve Deloach. Steve, how are you tonight? I'm doing great, Mark. How are you? I'm doing good, buddy. I'll tell you, we've been talking about this all week long, and I am just so completely, hi. I mean, just, just completely jazzed. And... Um, uh, this is going to be a great show. I, I'm real, you know, I really, you know, I got to tell you, we, you know, we were talking on the phone earlier uh, with Susan for like an hour, and it just, uh, I could just tell we we're going to take off. But uh, also joining us from uh, Mississippi, we got uh, Don. How you doing, Don? Oh, I'm good, thanks. All right, I'm glad you could join us tonight and bring up some trivia about Rhode Island. That'll be handy. And uh, who else we have joining us? I guess that's everybody. Yeah, we're all here. Okay. Um, hey, wait. Do I get to join you also? <laughs> I'm getting to you. Oh, okay. I'm sorry about that. Okay, I'm waiting. <laughs> no, good. I'm glad you're ready. All right. Well, look. Uh, I, I need to do a little. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. What was I? What was I thinking? What was I thinking? What was I thinking? Okay. Um, there's, Hello, Mark. Who's your guest tonight? Uh, well, I, I've also got sitting here in the LCS studios, the professor of doo-wop. That's right, Tommy J, who will be on. Uh, what is it? When is that, Steve? Is that next week or the week after? I always forget. Yes, that's next week. That's right. Next, next fr- Friday, that's March not, the second. Next Friday night, we will be on with Tommy J's doo-wop pop. Say hi, Tom. Good evening, boys and girls, and all the ships at sea. Uh, that's right. Uh, you guys don't want to miss it. Don't be late for class. I'm telling you, you guys are going to learn more about doo-wop than you ever dreamed. It is one hop and happen show we're going to have next week. You got that right. That's right, baby. All right, now. Now to our guest. Uh, this goes back to 1967, believe it or not. Uh, the Summer of Love. Yes, that's right. The Summer of Love, boys and girls, when uh, my sister actually got uh, her first stereo and uh, went out and bought a bunch of albums, brought them back. And uh, one of the albums that she brought was an album by the Cowsills. That's right. The Singing Family. Uh, enormous uh, popularity. These guys were just over the top. And our, my entire family, we fell in love with the Cowsills immediately. Matter of fact... When we would go on vacation, and even when we were just driving to the grocery store, uh, we would hear, like, uh, some, I don't know, Rain Park and the other things, or We Can Fly would come on the radio, or What is Happy Baby, or Gray Sunny Day, and we would, all, we would just all start singing along. We thought we were the Cow Sills. We, were just, we just loved the Cow Sill family. And, of course, my sister, fortunately, and I couldn't because I was a guy, uh, she would buy Tiger Beat magazine and uh, Teen magazine and uh, you know, catch up on all the stuff with Burby, Bobby Sherman and David Cassidy and blech, you know, all those guys. But I was always looking in there to find out what was going on with Susan Castle. Now, I got some emails from some people, and I want to address that right away before we get to Susan. Uh, St. Mark, you, know, you said that you weren't, gonna, you weren't interested in celebrities. You said you weren't going to have like, uh, big fancy names on your show because you don't care about that nonsense and you only care about like regular folk i said yeah now look that's true however susan and i have 45 years of history here all right so that's different all right i i've been i've had a crush on her for 45 years and she has absolutely no idea who i am so forget that you know i'll do what i want thank you very much anyway so um I was on Facebook, uh, oh, I don't know, about five, six weeks ago, and uh, I had my usual carousel music on uh, that I was listening to while I was cleaning up around the studio and stuff, and uh, and on comes the cow sills, and here comes some uh, cow sill music I was listening to. I forget which song it was, but um, uh, it might have been Mr. Postman. And anyway, um, I'm listening to it, and I'm like, huh. I wonder, you know, everybody's on Facebook these days. I wonder if Susan Council would happen to be on Facebook. And I type in Susan Council, and lo and behold, there she is. And I thought, all right, cool. And so, I, I you know, I, I click the uh, ad friend thing. And then, like, about an hour, uh, an hour later, I'm sitting in front of my computer, and, and boop, 
Mar- uh, Susan Castle has uh, accepted you as a friend. And I thought, you know, I got nothing to lose. What the heck? So I type in the little side message thing you can do. And uh, I said, uh, uh, you know, hi, Susan. I'm Mark Mercer. I host Mark Mercer's Loving, Ca- Caring, and Shit. All right, enough of the stalker comments. I see that. Anyway, so... Um, <laughs> I sent her a message, and uh, I said, Susan, would you consider coming on my show? And she types right back to me. Sure, it'd be a blast. And I'm like, ha! <laughs> Who would have thought? Susan Council was actually texting me back. And it only took 45 years, but yeah, what the heck? And so uh, we went back and forth and uh, with a bunch of emails to uh, Russ, uh, her husband. And uh, finally, after um, car accidents and illness and Mardi Gras and oh. Miss Tune Guitars were finally there and we have reached tonight and Susan welcome to Mark Mercer's loving caring and sharing how are you I am fabulous Mark Mercer and I, thank you so much for loving sharing and caring well I, yeah, for it's, me. <laughs> it, it's my pleasure I'll tell you I um, you know I, I'm, I'm 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 speechless in so many ways I know that's hard for anybody to imagine but uh, <laughs> no I, I I've been looking I haven't for... noticed I haven't noticed you being speechless. <laughs> Oh, here we go already. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, okay, fine. You take the show. No, seriously. <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, you know, this goes back for so many years for me, Susan. And um, now, uh, may, may, I, you know, we've got listeners that are in the U.K. and in Europe, you know, all around the world. And um, I'm sure that because of the cultural differences, there are uh, people out there who do not know about the cow cells. They, they, now, they might know about the Partridge Family, which was basically the TV show that was right. based on used guys. And uh, would you mind telling those of our listeners who are uh, overseas that really don't know who's Ka- Susan Castle? You know, some guy in Estonia, right? Who is Susan Castle? I don't know the Susan Castle. Would you mind telling <laughs> everybody about your family and how you guys came into such a limelight back in the 60s and 70s? It would be my pleasure. Um, I guess the best way to start it off would be to say that my uh, two eldest brothers, um, Bob and Bill Kausel, mm-hmm. were um, uh, just kind of naturally inclined toward music. Mm-hmm. And my dad, this is what I read in the bio anyway, when I was about six. <laughs> uh, my dad, um, <laughs> it's actually true. Okay. Brought, uh, my dad was a, a Navy person, mm-hmm. and he brought a guitar back from Spain and handed it over to my brother Bill and really it just the rest was kind of history really these guys yeah we're just, I don't know what the deal is or where it came from I mean obviously my mother but we were all just kind of um, inclined um, naturally inclined none of us had any lessons or anything like that uh-huh. that would mean we were actually being stewarded by somebody right but uh, it would just kind of evolve. Um, it started off with Barry, uh, with Bob and Bill, mm-hmm. and then Barry joined the band as the drummer. Right. Uh, every time anybody turned seven or eight, they got put into the band. Oh, and, really? Uh, it, you know, it just kind of... Uh, and then there was this ill-fated day where I don't remember who... It's in the documentary, so look, listen for that later. Okay. But... Uh, um, my brothers had had uh, at least three record deals on on Joda uh, on on real small labels um, as a as a uh, quartet, uh-huh. um, and uh, nothing really came of that. Um, and then they put my mother in the band. Oh yeah. And the next thing we knew, we were living in uh, New York City, and uh, we had a hit record. Really. And then yeah, and I eventually. I mean, I was begging to be in this band from day one. But now, now you guys uh, you guys grew what? up you didn't grow up in New York. Where were you guys from originally? No, 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 no. Uh well, we're Navy brats, so we were from all over the place. Um, but our our most stabilized home, I guess, was Newport, Rhode Island. Okay. And I was born in Ohio mm-hmm. and, you know, the guys were from they were born in Virginia. Wherever dad was stationed is where whatever one of us would be born. Gotcha. And but we, we left Newport. <clears throat> we, we, I guess the whole thing kind of happened out of Newport. And we moved to New York City. And what, right, our, right in the city? Hit. Like, were you right in like Manhattan or, or Long Island? Yeah, or? oh yeah, 888 8th Avenue between 52nd and 53rd. And we were told to memorize that. Oh, wow. Because if we had to get into a cab and if we were alone. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I had to know how to get home. She was trying to equip us. Yes, that's. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Uh, I was seven. I'm like, wait, where am I? Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. In New York City, of all places, the largest city in the yeah. world. Yeah. Yeah. Just take After me home. Coming from Newport, which is like a fairyland. Right. Whatever. Mm-hmm. It's all good. So you're. And that's yeah. Go ahead. Right, so your first, so your first like experience in New York City was as a result of getting signed. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We um we loaded up the truck and moved uh, to Manhattan. <laughs> okay. And uh, uh, it was it was bit of a culture shock mm-hmm. and uh but a, a beautiful voyage just the same right um and uh I, I can't even and then um we were there for about a year and a half and we moved to uh brentwood california really land of the stars yeah why why'd you really, know we really were the beverly hillbillies we were the most grimiest little children and uh really <laughs> ourselves in some really interesting situations huh and, yeah. and what year was that? Uh, we moved to L.A. in 68. Okay. okay. So, so we were only in New York for about a year. All right, so what, did, it, did you cut no, one, one album while you were there, or, or what? Um, well, the first album was uh, The Cow Sills, mm-hmm. which Green the Park and other things, and I was not actually singing on any of that, because oh. I, was, I was still six, I think. Okay, you hadn't, um, you hadn't reached legal time. age yet, huh? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. My brother Bill told me, you know what? Um, he had a quality control. Is that right? And yeah, he did. And 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 you know, cute is cute. And yeah, but if you can't sing, forget it. If you can't sing, forget it. And yeah. I, was, I was too little to be able to, you know, really know how to sing. I. Um, so what did I you got, do? I mean, did you like you know sing in the shower, or did you just go get by yourself and start singing stuff? I I, I just listened to music that I loved mm-hmm. and. Oh, the story goes that I was in the car driving with my brother, who was probably 18 at the time, uh-huh. uh, or 19, I don't know. Um, and I, I guess I was harmonizing along with a monkey song. Oh, and yeah? And he looked at and me and just went, oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Just like that. He did. It was, it, well, i have been asking forever. and They'd stick me in the corner and tell me to play the tambourine. I think we all know that. Right. Um but uh, I guess I, I cut it, and I wasn't even trying. You know, we were just hanging out. He went, you know what, you have a really pretty voice. And now, you know, yeah. So, so that's he let how, me be in the band. So that's how it started, the first album. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, well, first album I wasn't on. I right. guess I, the monkeys weren't even out. So my first record was We Can Fly. Oh, okay, right. First album, yeah. Right. And we had already moved to New York. But I, I think I joined the band... I, I was in the band after we had released Rain Park and other things. Uh-huh. Okay, I, I just wasn't on the record because it, you know it took about a year, or probably a year and a half to make. Okay. Um, I, all I know is when I watched the Ed Sullivan show that we debuted on, my brother Bill said that I had been in the band for three months. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh-huh. I got I got put in pretty quick afterwards, but um, mm-hmm. yeah, it was awesome. So when you got to L.A., what did you guys do? I mean, uh, you, you folks enrolled you guys in local schools and stuff, and, uh, you, and yeah. they, they started yeah, like, yeah. working on the weekends kind of thing? Uh, no. We got enrolled in schools. We just never went to them. Oh, is that right? Uh, that's totally right. All right, so how did you uh, learn anything? I, I went to school first grade for a full year mm-hmm. and ninth grade for a full year. And, and the in-between, um, it was, you know, we were just, uh, my parents were... Um, young parents Mm -hmm. and i don't think that they had any kind of skills from their parents they were depression era kids right and uh my dad really basically just said to the guys you know if you want this i'll do whatever i can to make it happen now was he still in the navy i'm sorry was he still in the navy at this time no he no he retired in 64 but my brothers had been playing for a while okay i mean we got famous in 67 but my brothers had a very active musical life from about 63 on oh they were okay. amazing oh my god they were so good huh um and so you know when it went just kind of came, when my dad retired and it looked like nobody the kids weren't growing up and going to school and getting jobs and stuff mm-hmm. i think he just went all right well let's give it a whirl uh, to his credit right um however for the younger set of the family, not Barry, John, and me, our kind of youth kind of went in a very different direction. You know, okay. school wasn't important anymore. Church wasn't important anymore. And, yeah, right. You yeah. Know. Everything's gone. So, Music only, please. Yeah, and and quite honestly, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't know any other way 
except for I have children of my own, and I would, over my dead body, <laughs> allow them to live the life I did. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. It's kind of a bohemian lifestyle of sorts. 